and you'll be able to take a gander at uh, one of the newest members of the Boston Red Sox who is with us right now, Liam Hendricks. Liam, good morning. Thanks for coming up here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Are you? Is it annoying when people say good day, mate? Or uh... Uh, it's annoying when they mess it up like you just did. But okay. right, right. so it's not. You really. You're not supposed to express the. You're not supposed to fully. Uh, yeah, it's not, it, there's a little bit of a less of a, a less of a lag in between the G and the D. So it's good day. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out, mate! Get out, mate! Again. How do you, I want? I, listen, I want to talk baseball. I want to talk uh, <laughs> rehab. But how does a guy who grows up in Australia end up playing baseball instead of cricket? Um, well, T-ball was 30 minutes long and cricket was about six hours. So, uh, <laughs> wow. And I have a very pale complexion, wow. so I get sunburned pretty quickly. So okay. even as a six-year-old, no, we had a, a group of friends that went into T-ball yeah. and then I just continued on from there. So, uh, I dabbled in cricket, just high school stuff, but, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too, uh, too big. Uh, I saw that you were, uh, if there was no interest, uh, by mid February or whatever, you were going to wait out the, the rehab and the recovery. What was it about the Red Sox that, I mean, maybe you're going to say they were the only ones that, re- that reached out, but what was it about this team and, and this opportunity this season for you? Uh, so yeah, that was the plan on the 15th. If, uh, if we didn't have a deal in place, then I was going to rehab myself. I just didn't want that kind of limbo era. So I didn't want to be like, Oh, well, if they call now, I'll, I'll go to spring training. No, it's, uh. This is the date. If I don't have a job by then, I'm going to rehab myself and then get back. So that way I can just get into my own kind of routines in Arizona where I'm living. Uh, and, yeah, the Red Sox were one of the teams that reached out pretty uh, pretty early on uh, among, amongst about – we had probably 15 or 16 teams that had reached out. And um, everyone was interested in something similar to the deal that we got here, which is uh, that, that kind of two-year deal, uh, rehab this year. And then the Red Sox for me was – the big thing for me was they were very adamant that I could pitch this year. And that was one thing that that was a non-negotiable for me. Like it, the team said, "Oh, look, we'll see how it goes." It's, no, you're out. But um, I wanted to make sure I had an opportunity to pitch this year. Now, if obviously if a setback happens, if anything goes along that way, then we we readjust. But having the option at the start to pitch in 2024, and that was Brandon Henry, with the uh, the head trainer down there. He uh, he was like, "No, I don't envision a place where you do not pitch for the 2024 Boston Red Sox." And that was something that was really important to me. When do you want that to happen? Uh, I mean, I've been pushing for April, but they said no. <laughs> uh, no, so 12 months will be uh, uh, August 2nd, and so that's right around the time I, I want to get back. It's 12 months. I mean, I am 35. I'm not getting any younger. Um, I kind of have uh, – I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that the chemo helps the recovery with the TJ a little bit, so we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it just – I'm trying to get back out there as soon as possible, but in a safe manner. Yeah, Courtney brought that up this morning when we were talking about talking with you, and, and – um, you you did fight cancer and you are a cancer survivor, which is extraordinary. Yeah, well, I mean, there's millions of people who do it on a daily basis. I just got lucky and I had a very uh, like so the uh, the type of lymphoma I had was a very treatable one. So it was technically it was stage four, but it was a, it was a lower category. So yeah, I ended up having four rounds of uh, four rounds of immunotherapy, eight rounds of chemo, and the regularly scheduled kind of programming is six six rounds. But um, I responded really well. Uh, I went from my PET scan looking like I looked like a Dalmatian, which is mine, mine back home with Olive, <laughs> and uh, the next one looked pretty clear. So it was, uh, it was great. So I responded really well. Have had no issues since, um, and uh, yeah, now just kind of get back out here and, and enjoying being in the clubhouse with a with a bunch of guys who want to win. When you're able to come back from that though, and then you got comeback player, and then right after that you get injured and have to go through Tommy John surgery, you're such a positive guy. You came in here all smiles. You seem ready to go. You're excited to get back out on the field. How do you do that as a professional athlete, 35, you've had quite a career already. How is it that you wake up and still want to do this over and over again, despite all the challenges you've, you've faced in the last year? Yeah, it's, it, it, last year was an interesting year. Uh, obviously, going through kind of uh, the cancer diagnosis, the treatment and everything like that, and then kind of uh, destroying, trying to make my elbow look like dog meat. Um, <laughs> it, it was a lot It was a lot to ha- handle, but... I mean, I come to the field every day with a smile on my face. I'm enjoying. I I get, I get to come to the field. I get to come to a baseball field for a living. I mean, how good is that? You don't get that op- opportunity too many places other than what you guys do in spring training. You get to look over here and, and lord about us, and hopefully, don't talk too much crap. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, it's just it's a positivity thing. It's it's you come to the field every day. I get a chance to. There's always a silver lining. There's a silver lining to absolutely everything. Whether it be the smallest little thing, whether it be I just get walked off in a in a, in a been a visiting clubhouse or visiting team and there's a silver lining in the fact of hey if i throw that pitch 99 more times he hits it maybe twice and it's just there's a silver lining in absolutely everything and if you can find that life's a hell of a lot more fun speaking of talking crap 
What have you been told, if anything, about playing in Boston? Um, well, a little bit. I mean, they, they can tend to be a little harsh, but let's be honest. I mean, I like criticism. It fuels me. I mean, everybody keeps telling me I can't do things. And I have been going out there and proving them wrong on a year-to-year basis, probably for the last four years. For the first, like, eight years of my career, they were probably proven right. But um, <laughs> the last the last few years, without a doubt, it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's going out there and proving people wrong. So, just letting you know if you uh, if you do say anything, watch me. <laughs> I love it. Liam, I love it. One of the things that you just talked about real quickly is what made you come to Boston was the fact that your ability to pitch in 2024. What were some of the other things when you look at you know former All Star pitcher and coming to a place that is finished in a la- uh, uh, place like Boston is finished in last place these past couple of years, what made you choose here maybe then some other opportunities that maybe looked a little bit better promising when it came to winning? Yeah, as far as winning goes, I mean, I think Boston has always been a team that has overperformed what it says on paper. They are, like, from what, from the outside looking in, they always seem to have a hell of a lot more fun than a lot of other teams. They're less structured. They go about doing their business, but they always pull for each other. And that's one thing. They're, they're, uh, they're more than the sum of their parts. Where other teams, you see what they are on paper, and that's pretty much what you're going to get. And uh, I feel like here, especially with like AC down in the clubhouse, I think he's a good guy that is able to unite. He's done it before with several different teams. He's seen the kind of formula. Like you look at what the Astros do, and the Astros are a really good regular season team, but when they get to the playoffs, they're an absolute animal. It's a different, different vibe. So he, like bringing that kind of attitude over here, it's uh, and it worked out a couple times. I mean, that's what it is, and I'm excited. And plus, let's be honest. Uh, Boston's never had an Aussie, so that's uh, <laughs> there's only, yeah, there's only a couple so. teams left. So. Uh, Wiggy, he he won't tell you because he's very shy, but he knows he knows firsthand. He played for the Patriots, so uh, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. So that's not Aussie rules football. Yes. No, it's which American throw ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you played some. I think you played some yeah. Aussie rules too, right? Yeah, back when I was a junior, I uh, yeah I was actually in a a name that may be synonymous, not too much to to Boston fans, but uh, Patty Mills. He's an Aussie in the NBA. Um, I play. I made a representative team with him at the under under 15s. We made the uh, all Australian team, and uh, yeah, it's uh, in, in Aussie rules. So it's um, yeah, that was that was my go-to. Baseball was actually a backup plan, but when someone d- is willing to throw you a little bit of money as an 18-year-old and say, "Hey, go to America with an Australian accent." Turn down. <laughs> it's hard to turn down. You were crocodile uh, Dundee. Yeah, no, that no, accent. Yes. That, that yes. guy set us back 20 years. <laughs> that guy, everyone thinks we carry a knife, we wear yeah. leather vests. Yeah. You don't, a, you're not putting shrimp on the Barbie and, no, and that kind of thing? No, you throw, you throw some prawns on the Barbie. Okay, right. prawns, no, no on the Barbie. Yeah, but, prawns on um, the Barbie. Yeah, I'm a terrible shrimp. What, kind of what kind of sauce on the prawn? I'm a sauce guy. Uh, usually just as is for me. Okay, I all like right. it just fresh, just okay. fresh straight as is. But yeah. um, now you're in Fort Myers, you can't go past a nice little bang bang from Bonefish. Yeah. If, you, if you get a chance to go to Bonefish Grill, check it out. Bang right. bang shrimp. That's, that, the bang bang shrimp Top over much. there is good? All right. much. Yeah. Uh, Liam, i got to ask about the Netflix series because that was breaking news we're excited about it you get to this team and now you have them running around it's an added uh, excitement i guess how's it been for you how's it been for you knowing that this season is going to be captured yeah it's it's obviously a lot um different cameras are walking around but i mean (laughs) this is gonna sound weird but the cameraman in oakland is in your face at all times it doesn't matter in the clubhouse no matter what so i'm used to having like that around a little bit more uh, with Z-Man, he's fantastic, but yeah, no personal space. Uh, but similar thing, like I, I also had a, a documentary crew filming me in the hospital when I was getting chemo and stuff like that. So I've had the cameras around, and the biggest thing I've learned is just be yourself. If you're yourself, it doesn't matter. You're not going to like, naturally, we're not controversial people. It's if you be yourself, it's, it's when you're trying to not be yourself that you get into trouble. So if you just go out there and be normal, act normal, and uh, look, you got to have faith in the fact that Someone up top in the Boston brass is going to kind of flag anything that uh, may or may not be a little risky. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's exciting. I think it, it brings an opportunity to let, to let guy, let the fans in and let people in on our day to day lives and the fact that yeah, we're not just a uniform on the field, but we do have wives, we do have partners, we do have spouses, we have animals, we have kids, we have lives, we have struggles on and off the field, and it's uh, it's an opportunity to kind of bring that awareness. Speaking of the uniforms on the field, uh, how bad are they? This, this. Um, yeah, they're not great. Okay, uh, but I'm also a, like a purist in the fact of I I love the stitch numbers. I like the fact that the numbers and the letters were heavy. It was just that I think I I think it may have been Miles Michaelis that had said it. It was just a weight when you get to the big leagues from the minor leagues. It was a weight of the jersey that you put on that just it you had that realization that you're in the big leagues. 
And um, that was great. I think what they need to do, I don't know how the City Connects are here, but in Chicago, the City Connects are really thin and great material. What they should have done is you go into that. Yeah. Uh, but look, I'm until I'm done, until I'm back playing, I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, right now, it hugs in all the wrong places because <laughs> right. I decided to hibernate for the winter instead of doing any actual work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and the pants are see-through, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I, a, it's a lot. I mean, I it, it's great for my brands. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I wear an Australian brand tights underneath my leggings, and it's just all a right. big 2XU on the back. Yeah, that's great. Talk it about is. a walkabout. Uh, yeah. Raph- Raphael Devers said last week what I think a lot of fans have been thinking, and maybe, maybe some of the guys on this team, essentially, the guys on this team kind to know what this team needs and and uh, i'm assuming that that's pitching um a how did you guys feel as a pitching staff about those comments and is that something you look for in a guy like devers who's becoming maybe a leader on this on this team yeah at the end of the day i don't think you can ever be happy with whatever lineup you're throwing out there no one's 100 percent happy with whatever they're going to do um i've come into this organization from afar so i'm kind of still getting my bearings about guys that are in here but i mean talking to the guys that are around there's some nasty guys around. Just even watching him play catch, I think there's a lot of guys that uh, don't have the best track record or haven't got the best rap but are going to do some special things given the right mindset, given the right opportunities. And that's something that uh, I'm hoping that I can bring in as far as the mindset goes early on is just getting that as that positive vibe and the fact that, you know what, hitters suck. As at, the, at the end of the day, hitters suck. Hitters are very, hitting is a very hard game. I could throw the exact same pitch 10 times and the best hitter in the world is going to get on three, uh, 30% of the time. So that means I'm going to win 70% of the time. If you get that little track record in your, in your own head being like, look, I can throw a, a crap pitch right now, and I'm going to beat him predominantly most of the time. <laughs> Pitching's a lot easier than it is to hit. So yeah. hit a suck. Stop, being, stop overthinking things and just throw it. I love it. I love it. Uh, just a question. Did you guys have to approve the Netflix thing? Was that in any way, like, do you guys get anything because of it? How did that work? Uh, as far as I don't know, with as far as we get anything, I know it had to be approved through the union. and I had to, they, they had to go through a lot of channels between uh, the commissioner's office and then the actual team and then the players' associations. There's a lot of uh, a lot of hoops they had to jump through. But in saying that, I think, I think you look at the success of, say, the Drive to Survive series or uh, the Six Nations one, which I'm watching right now, which is about the, the rugby. rugby. Yeah. Um, there's There's been a lot of positive feedback about it all because you get a chance to delve into these people's home lives. You get a chance to see, oh, yeah, look, this guy's not just a 100-game capper for Scotland. He actually wakes up every morning not being able to walk, and he goes through the red the, this rigorous training just to be able to get to the on the field. And I think that's the stuff that people don't really see as much, and I'm really excited to kind of – open up that avenue and then really show off some of these guys' personalities that uh, that may not be as outspoken or as kind of loud and obnoxious as I am. 35-year-old veteran, he's seen a lot of pictures, so I want to get your opinion on somebody like Brian Bale. Like, what, do you, what have you seen from him so far being here? Uh, he's my locker mate, so other than him needing to clean it up a little bit, um, <laughs> he's been good. No, he's been good. Uh, it's, been, it's always interesting because I love just – I've been sitting in the video room a little bit just trying to get the bearings of what guys we have and uh, – yeah, we got some we got some special arms out there, but not only I think with Bello, it's um he's got a good head on his shoulders, and that's one of the things, especially as a younger guy. I struggle with it a lot when I came up, and I didn't have the stuff that he had, and he's got the stuff and the good head on him, and that's uh that's that's a hard combination to get as a as a younger guy. You talked about Alex Cora a little bit, but the front office as a whole, how has that been for you? Have they been communicating with you? How uh, what's that FaceTime like? Yeah, it's been great. Obviously, I am um, a little bit of a shit stirrer, so <laughs> me, uh, <laughs> me having those conversations. But like, we got Baylor, we got Cora, we got uh, Bresso, we got what thirty years of uh, major league service time in that, and just in those three guys. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think I was playing when Bailey was still playing. I don't think Cora, but I was playing when Bress was still playing. So I've I've uh, I've got a lot more people that I played with back in the day that are in now GM and front office and coaching roles, which is weird. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. It's, they're still one of the guys, which is fantastic. You can still have those honest conversations, and you know what? There's not a, really an ego on them, so they can actually accept something, and you can have a conversation about it. Now, I wouldn't go yell at their face to sign mm-hmm. a guy or to not sign a guy or do this or do that, but you can have honest conversations and just to see where they're where their agenda is, and that's something that's really cool. Well, what's the vibe like in the clubhouse? Because we talk about, you know, guys buying in, guys being all in, and, and you know, is front office in, is Alex Cora, like, he, this is one year left on his deal, is he kind of in? Is, what's the player vibe like in the locker room as far as what you, uh, what you guys' expectations are on what you're trying to accomplish this year? Uh, so I can only talk from the pitcher side because that's where my locker is, and that's generally the guys I'm hanging out with. But the vibe is, I mean, we're, like 
if you come to spring training not expecting to win, you're doing something wrong. No matter what, like we came, I was with the uh, with the A's, and we had a chance to like we were scheduled to win what 65, 70 mm-hmm. games, and we ended up winning 80. And that's something that we were able to not quite. Well, I think we put a winning season up on that year as well. But it's uh, it's something you don't come into every season expecting to win. Then you just you're fighting an uphill battle. But we got a lot of guys out there with a lot of things to prove, and that's one thing that's uh, that's really cool. It's it's a hungry team. And now it's um, all it takes is for a good first month, a good first couple of weeks for a lot of these guys to buy into the fact of, oh, crap, we can actually do this. And you get that rolling, and you, especially you get a good group of the coaching staff around us who are very positive and, and moving forward and, and having a lot of information which they can delve into. I think it's uh, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people this year because we're being counted out, as you said. Mm-hmm. We're, we're projected to finish last in the East, which is uh, obviously the East. I've dealt with that in 2015. It's not a fun division to be in. And uh, it's an opportunity now where we can go out there and surprise a lot of people with this even schedule. I mean, if we beat up on the teams that we're supposed to beat up on, it's anybody's race. Um, have you and your wife had a chance to experience Boston yet, or did you come right here? Uh, so I came here. I actually, <laughs> so I signed on the Thursday. I went to PT in uh, in Arizona with Andrew Hauser, who was my guy out there. And then, without telling the team, I booked a flight on Saturday morning. And just showed up. Um, so I have a house down here. I used to live down here. So when I was with uh, with uh, the twins, we we stuck around down here. So I went to the house. Uh, we got a foster cat right now. So yeah, I was lonely at the house. So I got a cat. What's um, the cat's name? Uh, it's currently Alexander, but we're, it just doesn't look like an Alexander. Really? Right. Really? Yeah. Okay. Got so we, maybe a Clyde or a Gus uh-huh. or a, okay. I don't know something 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 with a little bit more character. But now, uh, are you a Cat guy, or you just took advantage? Because I'm suspicious of cat guys. We have several. Of okay. Each. Oh, several, oh, several cats. Several cats, several dogs. Oh, oh okay, your oh, dog. Wow. Okay. Yeah, right, so we've okay. got uh, you. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah. Tra- traveling with. By the way, I mean, let's be honest. You can't be like I always put it. So you have to be a really man's man, which I hate that term now. But man's man to have like a chihuahua or a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so true. <laughs> but yeah, we have uh, we have we'll travel probably with four cats and two dogs. Yeah. Uh, the Dalmatian will be with us and Ooh. Olive. Um, and have you been made aware yet how dangerous it is to be a Montreal Canadiens fan in Boston? I uh, so I went to opening day when I was with the when I was with the Jays, and it was Leafs Habs wearing full Habs gear, and they put us on the video board. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I got traded like three weeks later, I think it was. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yes, I am very aware of. Uh, I actually went to the Winter Classic in ooh, when it was at uh, Gillette Stadium, but Habs Habs yeah. Bruins, and yeah, I mean it's. I'm never going to change my allegiances. Okay. But I'm still allowed to support another team. And let's be honest, I mean, it's, it's always fun to watch a guy like Ulmark do what he did last year, a guy coming from um, not quite the pedigree that anyone expected, and then putting together the, uh, the Vesna Trophy. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty special thing. Well, you'll get a chance to go maybe to schedules work out, go to some playoff games. Watch, yeah, my wife's, already got, t- my wife's already got tickets to one of the games. Oh, she's <laughs> yeah, she's already it's already right. oh, very great. expensive. Yeah, uh, very expensive right now. I do have a recommendation for the cat name. Yep. Jame. Jame. Are you a Summer Heights High fan? Uh, yes, Summer Heights High. Depending, it's, uh, We Are Australian was his first show. It's uh, Chris Lilly is the actor. Yes, yep. Uh, he's a guy G. who plays six different characters. in. Uh, so it starts off with We Are Australian. I think it's six different people that are all in the running for Australian of the Year, and oh. it's a lady rolling, ac- like literally rolling across Australia, like sideways. Uh. Uh, a Asian. <laughs> not re- I'm not that. Fr- I don't really think of the Australian. No disrespect. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the Australian people, as when I think of them, I don't think of entertainment as what they do. Oh, Chris what? Hemsworth. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hemsworth. We've got. Uh, <laughs> no, no, have you ever seen Angry Dad? That uh, guy's hilarious. Angry Dad. You would love yeah. Summer Heights High. Yeah. I mean, you would music- love it. musically, you had Olivia Newton-John. Olivia Newton-John, Kylie Minogue, uh, ACDC, uh, uh-huh. Men at Work, Men at yes. Work. Uh, the Vegemite sandwich. I yeah. love Vegemite. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I've got Vegemite sitting in my locker right now. You do? I, ever, I, I have it. Uh, so I tend to eat it just when I'm bored, uh, just because it's there and it's uh, it's great. It's good for you. Doesn't they have that be, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to What's be. Re- do they have that at Publix? No, nah, we'll oh, market. Okay, good. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. Nah, no, it's concentrated yeast extract. Oh, oh. oh. So, so pretty much it's just condensed soy sauce. So if you like uh, salty, you like it, but it's. You got to spread it on. I'd say a lot of butter and a little bit of Vegemite. That's the way to do it. Not like you Americans do and try and make it like peanut butter. Yeah, <laughs> not it. <laughs> That's not it. No. All right, All right. Liam. Well, listen. Uh, great. We can't wait to see you actually on that mound. And mm-hmm. you're thinking August, something like that, right? Yeah, that's the plan as of now. Um, apparently, uh, according to my rehab program, I'm about 10 miles an hour harder than where I should be. Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, much of the trainer's chagrin, but I'm just out there smiling because this is like I'm going through the motions pretty easily, and the ball's coming out really well, which is great. Um, now it's just a matter of kind of that repetition 
situation. And I mean, as far as they've described to me, the re- the, the way to do it is you got to stress it to kind of tear it to bring it, build it back up, tear it to build it back up, tear it to build it back up, and. Uh, it's just uh, I'm not I'm not a huge uh, wait and see kind of guy. I'm more of a let's just test it right now. Uh, so it's they're, they're trying to rein me in a little bit. Um, and and certainly when it comes to your experience being in the league for a while, you feel like one of the things that you can bring is a, a leadership aspect over the next few months while you're not pitching. Yeah, I mean that was one of the other things with the Red Sox is they they gonna they were very open to me traveling with the team on the road as well. Uh, not only just rehabbing in Boston or in Fort Myers, it's actually going to be with the group. And um, after not being with the group so much last year, it's uh, it's something that I really appreciated that opportunity. And uh, yeah, being out in the bullpen, just getting a feel for the way guys do. Like I've been around guys who have really, really good stuff, but just, uh, just racked by nerves or just get too into their thoughts and they start being like, well, if I, I just threw a fastball by him, so he's going to be sitting fastball because I'm throwing a slider. No, you're an idiot. He just swung and missed at a fastball. Throw a fastball. Throw a bloody fastball again. <laughs> it's not that, it's like pitching's very you know, for me at least, but getting through you guys a little bit that way. It's um, that's hopefully my plan for the next little bit, and uh, hopefully then I can put it into practice when I get back. All right, mate. <laughs> we, pre- <laughs> uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, Aussies in Boston. We ne- yeah. n- none of us pronounce our Oz. All right. Well, we, listen. We we welcome you on the show anytime during the season. So we'd love appreciate to, it. We'd love to talk again. And thanks for taking the time. Yeah, this thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for kind of. Hopefully, being positive. Yeah, or, yeah. It's, well, up, it's up to you. We got a baseline. I, so I've got one story. It's like uh, our season is going to be like I don't know if you know the name Chris Colabella. Uh-huh. Played for the Jays. I played with him there. He um, he's a Boston native, and he always has this thing. He goes, my my favorite movie is Pitch Perfect. He goes because I came in with a very very low baseline. And he goes, and it was a plus six. So he came in with this way, like you know, when you go, you there's all the the movie has all the hype and all this sort of stuff, and he goes, yeah. yeah, it was a great movie, but I was expecting it to be a six, and it was an eight, so it's only a plus two. Yeah, he came in with a zero. He came in with a two. Pitch Perfect was a was an eight, so it's a plus six. So that's what we're coming in with this season. We're not expecting to do too much, and we're going to come in with a plus twenty when low expectations. Low expectations, and then you deliver. On exactly the field. right. That's what we want. Got to lull them into a false sense of security. <laughs> All right, Liam Hendricks. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate very much. it, guys. We are at JetBlue Park, and it is day one of our three days of broadcast here during spring training.